Boom, let's do it. How we doing? Thanks for being along. Flames Nation Live is underway on this Sunday. Steinberg along with you from the home studio. Hopefully you're doing well. Hopefully your weekend is going well. Big win for the Flames on Saturday. Lots to talk about as always as we dive in. Jesse first in. Bryce in with us as well. And uh, you can start getting your questions, comments in on the live chat if you're with us live right now. Jesse's already got our first question. We'll dive in on that in just a second. But before we do anything on Flames Nation Live, we tell you that we're brought to you, as always, by our friends at DoorDash, where uh, we encourage you to continue using our uh, Flames Nation Live F- Flames Nation Live promo code. Go to DoorDash. Create the account, download the app, and then when you're going to make your first order, use the promo code FNLIVEDD. That's going to get you 25% off your first order and free delivery. So keep on using that Flames Nation Live pro- Flames Nation Live promo code. Don't know why that's so hard to say today. It's FNLIVEDD. Go download the app. Create the account at DoorDash. Okay, so as uh, we start to uh, get some comments in on the live chat there's lots to talk about when it comes to this team right now there's a lot to dive into when it comes to some of the issues and I guess first of all big win for the Flames over Washington they needed that one Um, and and even though most of the offense didn't really come until the the back half of the third period there was only the three goals scored total and two from the Flames in the first 50 plus minutes uh, it was it was good to see the Flames get rewarded you know Rizicka finishes with three points and he kind of breaks it wide open after back springs him on that great pass Backlund with three points that line with those two and Blake Coleman was dynamite against Washington the Kadri line was able to produce Mangiapane scored a pair um, and it just that was a night where much like the Montreal game they did a lot of good things and they put a lot of pucks towards the net and they spent a lot of time controlling play but Against Montreal, they ran into a red-hot goaltender in Jake Allen, and they were unable to convert. And on this night, for a few different reasons, they were able to convert. And uh, over my right shoulder there as well, how good did those reverse retro jerseys look uh, on the Flames? I thought they looked outstanding. Um, I thought the entire kits were great. I thought Dan Vladar with those with those kits on looked unbelievable the white pads looked okay with blasty didn't look bad but they looked great with the white c and just all the 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 white markings on that just the the white pads and and then the the white notes on vladar's pad on on the flames jersey the reverse retro looked great thought it was awesome anyway big win for the flames they needed that and look right now and we're going to dive in on the live chat in just a second but right now they need wins Right now, they need to find a way to start digging themselves out of what is still not too deep a hole, but they have started to dig one nonetheless. As they've played 24 games, they find themselves out of a wild card spot and find themselves out of a Pacific Division playoff spot, both by points percentage and overall points. Right now, LA's the three team in the Pacific by points, but Edmonton is the three team by points percentage, and Vegas, Seattle are both one, two in, in both those categories. Calgary is back of the wild card and back of that. Not by a massive amount, not by an amount that should cause panic, and not by an amount that that should cause any changes in terms of the way they were going to approach the season, but you got to start winning games. And when we talk about them needing to start winning games, it goes to the goaltending conversation. And Dan Vladar looked really strong again against Washington. That's five consecutive really solid starts for Dan. And, And I think there's no question at this point, at least in my mind, that Vladar needs to get a little bit of a run here and needs to get a little bit of a stretch where he starts more than Jacob does. And and that's not to say that you're, you're not just going to bench Markstrom. You're not just going to not use him anymore. But right now, Jacob's got to get his game to a higher level and you don't need to continually force him into the net because you've got the other guy playing really well. It's, an actually, it's actually a nice luxury to have if you're the Flames with Vladar playing as well as he is and Markstrom struggling we all know that the Flames need Jacob to be a big part of this team's success this year but because Vladar is playing so well 
it allows Jacob the time, the space, and the opportunity to work through his issues. And on top of that, maybe it ends up being that Vladar proves himself and you can't take him out of the net. That's not bad either. If all of a sudden he starts pounding on the door as a number one this season, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but if it did, that's not a bad thing either. The, the more options you could have at the world's silliest position is, is a good thing. The more good options specifically you can have is a good thing. Okay, let's uh, dive in on the live chat here on this edition of Flames Nation Live. Starting with Jesse, who says, hoping Vladar gets more and more starts. Let's uh, let Marky ride the pine. And again, it's not about benching Markstrom or anything like that for me. It's and 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 John uh, Jones says uh, bench Marky go down. It's it's not to me about that. Um, and it's it's not about the it's not about punishing Markstrom for the way that he's played. It's more just there's no question that they need more from Jacob. There's no question they need his game to get to a higher level. And as a result, they've got the ability to dial back his workload a little bit. Let him work with goaltending coach Jason LaBarbera. Let him work on however however a number one goalie gets out of a stretch where he's not playing very well and he's letting in more soft goals than we're used to. However a number one gets out of it, the Flames are afforded a little bit of time for that to happen as Vladar really starts to get a little bit more traction. I'd be a little surprised if Dan didn't go Monday against Arizona. And I know there's all this talk about you got to get Markstrom back in. You got to get Markstrom back in. And I understand that. I'm not again. I'm not saying that you you bench him. I'm not saying that you send him away from the team. I just think for a little bit of time, a week, two weeks, whatever the case may be, give Vladar a little bit of a run, see how he handles it, and then see if that dialing back for a stretch of time on Markstrom allows him to, in his next few starts, be a little bit more of an effective number one goaltender. Okay, more on the live chat here on Flames Nation Live. Um, Jesse says, do you think Pelche or Phillips will get a call up anytime soon? Well, I, I got to be honest, it, it doesn't really feel like that is going to happen. And and here's here's where I am on the recall situation. I've said this plenty of times on Flames Talk over on Sportsnet 960, where, uh, where we do the show four to six every day. I I think there's plenty of reason, even even after the win against Washington, there's plenty of reason to think about recalling a forward. There's plenty of reason to be giving one of your players, one of your really good um, and, and promising prospects an opportunity. Jacob Pelche just had a point streak snapped at 11. Somehow he didn't factor into a 6 nothing win uh, for the Wranglers in San Diego on Saturday, but he, he had an 11-game point streak prior to that. Um, we know Matthew Phillips continues to light it up. That's two straight games where he scored highlight reel goals against the Gulls, um, both on Friday and Saturday. Like I, I get it, and I, I think that there is plenty of reason to go down that road. I don't get the sense the coach is ready for that, and if the coach isn't ready for that, then if you're the GM, you're not, and, and if you're management, you're not going to recall the player to not play. You'd much rather, and, and look, I, I disagree. I think that there is reason. I think that there could be something gained from having one of those two guys. I, I also throw Zary into that conversation. So one of those three guys, whoever it might be, I think there's plenty of merit to suggest they could help this group. But if the coach isn't going to play them, and, and if the coach doesn't agree uh, with, with you and I and, and, and many of Flames fans right now, you can't recall the guy because you can't you can't force the coach's hand. You're not going to make him play anybody, and at the same time, you're not going to have one of those players languish as a 13th forward and, and not getting in, or if they do get in, not being in a in a role that allows them to have success. So it's it's I get it. If I were a Flames fan, I'd be slightly frustrated by it because you've got this great story in Michael Phil um, Michael Phillips Matthew Phillips, but I think that so do I do I see it coming anytime soon. I'd be a little surprised. I'd be pleasantly surprised if I was wrong, but just reading the tea leaves and, and just where things are right now, I'm, I'm not necessarily anticipating, at least just for the sake of it. If injuries happen, I think maybe a little bit of a different story. Um, back to goaltending with Shannon. Uh, as Shannon on the live chat says here, uh, there's no controversy because you play the hot hand, and if the coach doesn't get it, then it's more like a coaching controversy. Um, and right now I think they are going to play um, – they are going to play some 
uh, or, or a little bit more of the hot hand, at least for the time being. Christopher says go with uh, you win and you're in with your goalie tandem right now. I don't know if I'm, I'm quite there yet because you still have a guy in Markstrom that has a proven track record of being able to sustain high level of play over a long period of time. And I think you want him to get back there. So I don't think we're quite at win and you're in. But I do think for the time being, you're leaning a little bit more Dan's way when it comes to the workload again, you know. If over, say, a six-game span in two weeks prior, it would be like Vladar getting one start and, and Markstrom getting five. Maybe you go like Vladar gets four and Markstrom gets two over a two-week span and or, or a week and a half or whatever that would be, and, and then you reevaluate after that. You see, where, you see where Dan's game is, and you see how Jacob is working in practice in some of those games. Like, I, I, I do think that this is – I don't think there's any, like – set scientific answer going forward. I think we're talking about this as, as kind of a, a fluid situation and the current part of that fluidity, at least in my eyes, has Dan getting a little bit more in terms of workload. I don't know how the Flames are going to treat it, though. I don't know if that's going to be the way they go about it. I'm anticipating Vladar to start Monday against Arizona, but we'll wait and see. Uh, Kevin says, did you see Phillips' crazy goal? Yeah, Saturday, that goal that he scored on the breakaway, does a little flip over like that's that is not only skill, but that is confident skill um, when it comes to Matthew Phillips and what you saw uh, against San Diego on Saturday. That was pretty impressive. And I believe now that's 11-1-1 one, one. the Calgary Wranglers are in their last 13 games. After a rough start to the season, they've won 11 of their last 13 and have points in 12 of their last 13. Jesse says, I've always been a uh, Lucic fan, but lately he's looked pretty slow and out of place. Not doing the one thing he's great at, which is fighting. Not sure why he was in last night and Richie not. Richie's at least producing with five goals. Um, well, on the Luch front, first of all, I actually thought Lucic played pretty well against Washington. That was one of his better games in a while. But by in you know the 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 body of work through twenty four games, yeah, I, I think it's been it's been underwhelming for Milan, and and I think that. Um, Based on what we saw even last year, it's been a little bit below or, or, or significantly at times below that. Um, I think part of it is the wh whether you agree with it or not, my guess is part of why a guy like Lucic wouldn't come out and a guy like Richie would is, is just a little bit more of that veteran um, money in the bank that a guy like Lucic would have with a coach like Daryl or, or a lot of coaches. That's not just singling out Sutter, but a lot of coaches. I think there's probably a little bit to that, whether you agree with that or not. Um, I think that that is a, a decent read of the tea leaves. I'm not expecting Milan to come out anytime soon. I think that they this group values the potential uh, physical side of it and, and what he can what they want as a fourth line. Like I I, I personally, this day and age, prefer the, the fourth line that's a little speedier and and maybe can be made up of, of different parts on this. But that's just me. This team prefers a fourth line that's a little bit heavier and has a little. That's why Richie and Lucic have been staples there. Uh, Rooney comes back in. Thought Rooney played fine. He adds a little bit more speed to that fourth line. Um, but maybe you could start going in a rotation. Daryl Sutter uh, admitted on our pregame show on Sportsnet 960 that Trevor Lewis is playing through an injury right now, and he can't take face-offs as a result. So maybe you're rotating through some guys. Maybe maybe one night Lucic sits. Maybe one night you give Lewis a rest. Uh, you bring Richie in, and, and if you were to do a rotation, I'm not suggesting that's what they're going to do, but it's something that I think is, is a fair suggestion when it comes to the way they work their fourth line, especially if they're not going to be recalling anybody else or anybody from the American League to, uh, to maybe jump in and get an infusion. So the Flames are back in action on Monday again. Against Arizona, then they finish this homestand Wednesday against Minnesota. Game times are seven o'clock Monday. Then note the start time on Wednesday, six o'clock against Minnesota. So that means Sportsnet 960 has your pregame show Monday at six and Wednesday on your drive home at five. Don't forget to go subscribe to Flames Talk on Apple, Spotify, Google, Amazon, or wherever you get your podcast. We'd love to have you along for the ride on Flames Talk. Uh, always spirited and, and pretty much nothing but Flames conversations uh, and all hockey talk on Flames Talk five days a week and post game after every Flames game. Flames Nation Live brought to you by DoorDash. We encourage you to use that Flames Nation Live promo code. It's FN 
live DD after you download the app and create the uh, create the account at DoorDash. Uh, go use that promo code FN Live DD. Thank you very much for all of your input. We'll talk to you later on this week. The Flames play Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday this week, so we'll uh, find a time Tuesday or Thursday, uh, probably in the evening, um, but who knows, maybe in the afternoon, to do our next Flames Nation Live. Thanks for being along with us on uh, this Sunday. Be well, and we'll talk to you soon on Flames Nation Live. Uh, stay safe, be kind to one another. Flames Nation Live, as always, brought to you by DoorDash.